Hi, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. Today we're going to have a special time where we will consider, think about and be grateful for how wonderful it is to be a Filipino. And you're going to hear George Gabriel, you're going to hear JC Libir and you're going to hear me talk about this wonderful gift that we have from God, that we are Filipinos. Watch this and be very blessed. Father, we just love being in your presence. There is no greater joy than we are with you in your presence, celebrating your love. And we just thank you for bringing us here today. And we believe that as we have unleashed the spirit of praise in this room, you have unleashed your power upon us. And we believe that everybody here from the front to the back will be transformed by your love and we will be one step closer to our dreams on this your great dance floor in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name come on and make some noise all the party people in the house tell someone beside you I'm so glad you're here I want you to tell the people around you ang galing nyo sumayaw and I want you to tell someone else beside you I'm so happy when I'm with you amen hallelujah praise God first timers raise your hand all right, welcome, first timers, first timers. We love you. We love you, first timers, and we're so happy you're here. My name is Brother Bo Sanchez. <laughs> no, but seriously, first timers, make sure that you get a gift from us outside after the feast, all right? We want to greet everyone who's watching on television and on the internet. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure that you open your heart to the Lord because He wants to speak to you wherever you are. Hallelujah. All right. Everyone here in front, up to the middle part of this room, can you turn around? Turn around. And I want you to say hi to the people in the back. People in the back, let me hear you. You gotta come earlier next week and agawan yun ng upuan tong mga to, all right? Amen. Let's give God one more clap offering. And everybody say, I'm so happy to be Filipino. I'm so happy All the proud Pinoys make some noise. That's what we're talking about for the next four weeks. Do not be absent. No matter what our venue is, we want you to be there and be transformed by this powerful series. Amen? Everybody, come together with one voice as one family. Let's make the sign of our faith slowly and meaningfully. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, stretch your arms out wide and declare with one voice, Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless overflowing abundance of God's universe today I open myself to God's blessings healing and miracles today I open myself to God's Word so I become more like Jesus every day shout it and because I am blessed I am blessing the world Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Our gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Can we please say it all together? One, two, three. You are like salt for the whole human race. But if salt loses its saltiness, there is no way to make it salty again. Continue. It has become worthless, so it is thrown out and people trample on it. Everybody say salt. Tell someone beside you, you are salt. 
Can you taste that person? Just, you know, put your finger and lick it. Are they salty enough? <laughs> All right, when we listen to this reading, there are two questions that come to mind. Number one is, what's so special about salt? You know, it's so ordinary. You buy it in the supermarket, you use it every day. What's so special about it? Why is Jesus hyping up salt? Second question is, can salt lose its saltiness? I've had salt in my house. It's been there for like 10 years. I mean, we don't use it anymore, but it still tastes salty, okay? I mean, salt doesn't normally lose its flavor. Does it ever become sweet? No. Does it lose its saltiness? No. So why would Jesus say, if salt loses its saltiness. Just, just to explain, all right? In the olden days, there was no refrigerator, yes? In Jesus' time, there was no cooler. There was no electricity. Hence, there was also no internet, no texting, no microwave. I mean, that's how it was before. They used salt to preserve food, okay? They would put the salt on the food and that's what it would preserve. Why? Because salt kills bacteria. Salt kills the bad microorganisms that attack the food and cause it to spoil. And so that's why it's so important. That's what's special about salt. Now, the thing about it is they would get salt from the Dead Sea. It, they didn't have supermarkets where they sold salt. You had to go to the Dead Sea and you would get salt in the form of a rock. And that rock would be covered with salt. So they would chip away the salt and then put it on the food. But eventually, the rock would run out of salt. That's what Jesus meant when the salt would lose its saltiness. It would run out. And that stone, they would just throw it away. And it would be trampled upon by people just like any other rock. Listen to me. Are you listening? Say, I'm listening. There is bacteria in society. There is evil bacteria in society. What's the evil bacteria? Hatred, anger, unforgiveness, dishonesty, selfishness. Yes? Corruption, traffic. But yeah. And so, when Jesus says, you become the salt, listen to me. You need to become the opposite of those things. If you are love, you will counter the bacteria of hate. If you are patient, you will counter the bacteria of impatience. If you are forgiving, you will counter the bacteria of unforgiveness. If you are joyful, you will counter the bacteria of sadness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is what it means to be the salt of the earth. So here, when we're here, we learn to be like this. It's happy to be here, yes? You feel love when you're here, yes? Don't you feel right now that you could forgive anyone in your life, yes? When you go out back into the earth, take the flavor of the feast. Take the flavor of Jesus with you and you become salt to this dying world. Amen? Tell someone beside you, don't lose your saltiness. Turn to someone else and say, stay salty. Because all of those things that we mentioned, loving, patient, kind, guess what? Ask me what? This is who you really are. This is who you really are. So tell someone beside you, be true to who you really are. Amen. Give God a clap offering. And put your hands over your chest and say, Father, thank you for making me your salt. I promise I will not lose my flavor. I will stay salty for you so that I can help preserve the lives of others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light 
unto my path. You've got a clap offering. All that be noise, make some noise. Amen. You've just heard George Gabriel, and now you're going to hear J.C. Liberian. He's going to bless your life. To open up with God's word today, please welcome Brother J.C. Lipiran. Mabuhay! Mahina! Mabuhay! I want you to turn to the person beside you. Sabi sa kanya, Mabuhay! Palagpakan natin ng bawat Pilipino na nandito ngayon. And they say that as Filipinos, no, lahat tayo meron tayong tinatawag na mga kaluk alikes, no? So can you look again at the person beside you mula ulo hanggang paa? Mula paa hanggang ulo. Hindi mo kang paa, hindi mo kang paa. Tingnan mo, hulaan mo kung sinong kahawig niyang artista. Can can you guess who's the celebrity look alike of this person? Oh, sige, baka magtagal pa tayo. Sabihin mo sa kanya, huwag kang magalala. Nag-iisa ka lang. You know, when people see me, they would always mistake me as a politician, the mayor of Quezon City. <laughs> Hindi po ako si Mayor Herbert Bautista. But, you know, when I try to compare our pictures, medyo hindi naman nagkakalayo. Again, sabi mo sa katabi mo, nag-iisa ka lang. And as Filipinos, nag-iisa lang tayo sa mundo. Amen? Come on again, let's give ourselves a round of applause. I want you to read this with me all together. Do not underestimate yourself by comparing yourself with others. It's our differences that makes us unique and beautiful. Amen? And as Filipinos now, isa sa mga likas natin, gusto natin ng libre. Yes? Sino dito gusto ng libre? Tignan mo yung katabi mo, siya ba yung mukhang manlilibre? O siya yung ililibre? But today, you know, before I give you the message, the talk, I want, okay lang bang magbigay ng libre? I want to give you a gift, yes? You know, just this Friday, I celebrated my 32nd birthday. Ayan. But thank you, naalala ninyo. No? And uh, uh, wala na ako sa kalendaryo, pero huwag kayong magalala sa lotto ticket pa ako. No? <laughs> and, and I want to share with you this, this gift of mine. I want you to visit my website. No? I want you to enjoy the ride of your journey. And uh, it's jclibiran.com. And also, I want you to check as well no? the page JC Libira because I don't want just to bless you here on stage but I want to bless you even after this. Yes? Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Sabihin mo sa kanya, ikaw rin man libre. Let us begin. Ayan. I want to share with you this story. Okay lang ba magkwento? Mahina. Okay lang ba magkwento? You know, that there, there was this group of friends and you know, after so many years they all work for the armed forces no, of course, reunion yan, kanya-kanyang payabangan. They were trying to brag about what they do. And, you know, the, the first one is in Air Force. Sabi niya, yung Air Force, ang aming motto ay, No guts, no glory. Pero sabi naman ngayon, no, syempre, hindi nagpatalo yung Navy. Sa amin namang Navy, ang motto namin, No retreat, no surrender. Syempre, hindi nagpatalo yung Army. Sabi niya, sa amin, no pain, no gain. Aba, may sumingit, no? Na security guard. Pilipino, Pilipino. Ako, ako, ako. Sabi niya, no ID, no entry. Ayan, palangpakan natin ng mga Pilipino. And you know what? Just like this story, you know, even if you know, everyone is on top, Filipinos has something to share. We have our goodness, we have our greatness. Yes? Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. O, di ba? Mukha pa lang yan, di ba? Blessing na. Tama ba? And... When we look at our reality as Filipinos right now, a lot of us, we're here in the Philippines, Ibanas abroad. Can, can we give a round of applause all those Filipinos abroad? Actually, they're watching live stream. And they're also representing us no? when they're out there. But alam rin natin that in our reality here in, in, in the Philippines, no? sometimes we tend to think, na bakit nga ba ako naging Pilipino? Or somehow we tend to see, uh, bakit ba nangyayari ganito sa bansa namin? And, you, you think of, I, I, I like to give up being a Filipino. Maybe some of you sumayad na yon or naisip yun na yon. And in my life, I, I want to share with you one episode of my life that parang I felt like giving up being a Filipino. Kayo ba ganun din? Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Mukha bang nag-give up din siya? And 
It was 2008. I lost my job. Na walang po ako ng trabaho. I lost my dad. Na walang po yung tatay ko. And I was really uh, searching. And part of that is uh, I was sulking. I was complaining about my life. And one friend of mine said to me, "Why don't you try your luck abroad?" Mag abroad ka. Subukan mo lang. Maluwag ngayon. And so I did. I went there. Lahat ng mga katabi ko sa, sa embassy, lahat sila, denied, denied, denied. Nakinakabahan ako. Ito na, ito na, ito na. Biglang sabi sa akin, congratulations, Mr. Juan Carlos Libiran. You are granted 10-year multiple entry visa. Ayan, no? And, and, and after, after that, tuwan-tuwa ako kasi finally, makakaalis na ako ng Pilipinas. And I know some of us, we have our dreams as well of going abroad. Working there, looking for greener pastures. So I tried my luck. And when I was already there, it was tempting. I was observing the Filipinos there. I was looking at the you know, great places. And daming pwedeng bilin when you have money, gadgets and everything. And I was already contemplating, babalik pa ba ako ng Pilipinas? I'm only given six months. And you know, but in my heart, my dear friends, my dear Filipinos, I felt that I was not really meant to be there. Part of me is saying, I want to go back home. Iba pa rin pag nasa Pilipinas ka. Oo, oh, oh, ang daming mga pwedeng ireklamo. Oo, oh, ang daming pwedeng sabihin na bakit ganito yung bansa natin. But still, there's something about this country that makes us come back and believe that yes, may pag-asa pa. Tama po ba? Kaya sabihin mo sa katabi mo, don't give up on us, baby. So I want to ask you that. Maybe you have given up on the Philippines. And, you know, furthermore, I want to Let's move forward with the slides, Ayan. You know, this, this one story, this girl, really is remarkable. During 2011, Typhoon Waning hit Albay, and this was, was all over diba? the internet. It became viral of a, this young girl. Diba? He went back to his uh, school, and then she protected. She, she got the flag of the Philippines. And after that, of course, alam natin, daming nabalitaan tungkol sa kanya. Ang pangalan niya po, Si Janela Lelis. Palapakan natin si Janela. Even if it's just a simple gesture, it means a lot. Malaking bagay po yun. Why? Because we, we are you know, looking at our young people na yes, tayong mga nandito na ngayon, may mga mali tayong ginawa, but when you look at young people now, they, they have something that they can do for our country. Pero hindi pa pwedeng ipasa na natin sa kanila. You know, everybody, kailangan natin magsama-sama. We need to protect again the Philippines. We need to look after again and how we can rise and improve and make this a better Philippines. Yes? Kaya sabihin mo sa katabi mo, kaya natin to. You know, even Jesus Christ in the Gospel, particularly in Mark chapter 8, verse 27, He was with the disciples and He asked, Who do you say that I am? It speaks about identity. And of course, alam natin yung sinagot nila. Tayo, maaring alam natin at kilala natin ang Diyos sa ating buhay. But we want to ask ourselves, as Filipinos, kilala mo ba talaga ang sarili mo? Sige, tanongin mo yung sarili mo, do I know myself? Grabe, no? Kinausap talaga yung sarili. I want to share with you what attorney Alex Laxon, the author of 12 Little Things That We Can Do For Our Country. No? Can we all together read this? One, two, three, go. Once in a while, we hear some negative comments about the Filipino. Sakit lang. Parang once in a while ba? Or mas madalas? Negative comments, no? And our country, to continue, but the Filipino cannot be defined by the mistakes of a few. Post. Maraming nagkakamali, pero hindi ibig sabihin, yun na ang buong Pilipinas. Yes? Tayo nagkakamali, yes? But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end. It's actually an opportunity for us to learn and move forward as Filipinos, to move forward as a country. Let's continue with that. The Filipinos are higher and greater than that. God has a beautiful story for us as a people. Amen? Amen to that? If you believe in that, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, excited ako para sa'yo. And I want to share with you this story about this, you know, Buddha, a, a statue of Buddha, wherein it's covered with clay and mud. And when the monks were trying already to, you know, to transfer this to the monastery, hindi nila nahawakan, nalaglag yung Buddha. And what happened is there was a tiny crack in the Buddha. And they were trying to look, you know, closely, anong meron doon? And there was a light, there was something shining inside it. 
And then eventually, sabi niya, tinawag niya lahat ng mga kasama niya, mga monks. And then, come on, all together, let's you know, chisel this, let's dig deeper. And then, lo and behold, after so many hours of working on that Buddha, covered with mud and clay, what they've discovered is a treasure within. They discovered a golden Buddha within. And you know, it says that historically, it was protected, it was covered with mud so that it won't be taken by the enemies. Pero unfortunately, all the monks who protected it died. And then after so many years, hindi nila na-discover that there was something. Not until itong recent na discovery nila. My dear friends, just like that story, sige, tignan ang katabi, hindi siya mukhang golden Buddha. <laughs> Just like that story, each person, each Filipino, this country, lies the treasure within. Yes? I want you to put both of your hands near your heart and say this after me. Deep inside me is a treasure. I am God's masterpiece. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause. One practical message that I want to share with you before I end my part, is as Filipinos, we need to think, speak, and live Pinoy. Pakulit po. Think, speak, and live Pinoy. Filipino tayo sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa. Pero hindi na po yung nakasanayan natin. Sa isip natin, it is now about crab mentality. No, it's about us being grateful about our goodness, our greatness as Filipinos. When we speak, we don't speak and badmouth about the Philippines. When you are in front of foreigners, you don't tell and complain and run. But instead, you're there to protect. You're there to tell that, yes, we're still learning. We're still moving forward. When you live and act, it's not because you just want to see what But you want to embrace your uniqueness as a Filipino, as a person. Yes? Finally, you know, when we were young, we were uh, in school, we normally do this during the flag ceremony. Do you remember the Panatang Makabayan? When we make an oath, an oath, a pledge to our country, we're going to do that today. Okay lang ba? But this time, no longer because we were forced to do it. This time, we're going to do it wholeheartedly. Okay lang po ba? Can I ask you to all stand? Rise. Everybody, take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Happy Independence Day. Come on, raise up your right hand. And be proud. Sabi natin to kay Lord. Be proud that you are a Filipino despite of we embrace our uniqueness as Filipinos. All together, Panatang Makabayan. Iniibig ko ang Pilipinas. Nakasan natin, aking lupang sinilangan, tahanan ng aking lahi, hinukukuk ako at tinutulungang maging malakas, masipag at marangal. Dahil mahal ko ang Pilipinas, diringin ko ang payo ng aking magulang. Susundin ko ang tuntunin ng paaralan. Tutuparin ko ang mga tungkulin ng isang mamayan, makabayan. Naglilingkod, nag-aaral at nagdarasal ng buong katapatan. Iaalay ko ang aking buhay, pangarap, pagsisikap sa bansang Pilipinas. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas! Everybody say this after me. Ako ay Pilipino sa isip sa salita at sa gawa. Come on, one more time. Like, give yourselves a round of applause. You've just heard J.C. Libiran, our Campus Missions Director. He's been able to bring a lot of young people closer to God in such a wonderful way. Now, you're going to hear me talk about God's love because we're Filipinos. Filipinos look down at themselves. What I've noticed is that there is an inferiority complex that we have to battle and struggle with. For example, Filipinos look down at their height. <laughs> but we should be proud of our height. I mean, think about it. You know, when, when, when you... I mean, Obed Cabrillas, one of our preachers here in Light of Jesus, he always says, I'm vertically challenged. My wife, who is five feet, you know, when, when people ask her, what's your height? She will, she will say, I'm five feet and three-fourths. You know, she will always insist that she's more than five feet. It's, it's like, but, but I tell people, no, you've got to be, are there, are there people here who are five feet? 
and proud of it. Raise your hand. Can you stand up and show? Show to people. Are you already standing? Come on. Come on, stand, stand. And, and, and wave at me, wave at me, and be happy. I'll, I'll tell you why, thank you, sit down. Thank you so much. You know, number one, you have no problems with leg room in the car, nothing whatsoever. Number two, when there's an earthquake, when there's an earthquake, you can, you can hide under the table easily. Or, or, or when you owe somebody money and that somebody is collecting money from you, you can get lost in the crowd, you know, just, you can hide. When, when you're shopping for clothes, you can go to the children's section, it's cheaper. And when you, you, you can sleep in any sofa, and it's okay, you can fit. And f you know, you, when you're walking and then you trip and you fall, it won't hurt so much because the distance is not very far. And, and the most important of all, and, and people like this, is that you know, when you're short, you're always 20 years younger. I mean, example, our own preacher here, Adrian Pangandiban. He's always, he never grows old. I, I don't know why. It's crazy. You know, he's, uh, when, I was, when I was two years old, he was already singing on TV. If you're my age, you probably know the singing group, Apat Nasikat. He was one of them. You know, when we go around the provinces, I'll be preaching, he'll be leading worship. There are some people who really come up to him and say, Brother Adrian, are you the, are you the love team of Nora Honor? <laughs> and you know, he, had to, he has to correct them. No, no, it's Lala Honor. But, but there, that's Adrian. I have a friend who's, who, who's vertically challenged and, and she says, you know, Brother Bo, um, people like me who are short, we're sick. You're sick? What are you sick of? Chronic cuteness. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Filipinos look down at themselves because of their flat nose. And, and, and I say, no, there are certain advantages. When you give birth to a Filipino baby, there is no obstruction on the face. You, you glide. <laughs> and, you know, you can drink with those narrow, tall glasses, you know, Filipinos can drink easily. <laughs> and lastly, you can kiss your spouse, your wife, or your husband frontally without angling. <laughs> just, just some advantages. <laughs> Filipinos look down at the color of their skin, and I say, why? I go to Australia, I go, I go to Europe, I go to America. All those people there, they, they labor themselves under the sun, sun bathing for hours. To what? To be able to get our skin color. A skin color that we were born with. Isn't that amazing? You know, I really believe this, that, that uh, we, we, have, we have some special gifts as Filipinos. God made us just right. Can you tap somebody in the arm and say, God made you just right? <laughs> Speaking of skin color, let me go scientific here. You know, our Caucasian friends, they are prone to skin cancer because there are, they have little pigments in their skin, very few compared to ours. And, but, but the great thing about our skin is that we're not too light and we're not too dark. The, 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 they had a survey, studies done. African Americans have 25% more cancer cases. And, and partly, it's because their skin cannot absorb enough sunlight. There, there is a lack, and, be, and because of that, they, there are you know, all sorts of other diseases like osteoporosis because of the lack of vitamin D. But your skin, you know, is, is just right. And, we, we just want to thank God for that. There is something that's a gift from God for you that, you, that you're created just right. Am I, am I speaking to somebody here? Not only physically, but even psychologically, emotionally, mentally. Your brain 
and your heart are balanced. I was having a, a trip in Spain. I was in a ship and I was talking to a group of American tourists. And you know, when they found out I was Filipino, they said, wow, you're Filipino. And, and they started talking about telling stories about Filipinos back home in Texas. And, and they were saying, you know, our Filipino friends, when we see Filipinos, they're always happy. They're always laughing. They're always eating. <laughs> and we're not only known for our laughing or our eating. We're known for our working. You know, I go around Dubai, Singapore, I go to Indonesia, I go to Oshana, I go to America, I go to Italy. You know what I find out? I find out employers prefer Filipinos. Nurses, our nurses are more caring. Our, our accountants are more hardworking. Our artists are more creative. It's amazing. There's also a right balance between initiative and cooperation. Great balance. I was reading an article. I was reading an article by a captain of a ship and he was describing when, when a machine breaks down, a machine breaks down in the ship, seamen of other nationalities will order the spare part. They will wait for the spare part to arrive not a Filipino seaman. The article was saying, a Filipino seaman will order a spare part, but while waiting for the spare part, he will try to fix it on his own and find a way to make it work. Dahil, in Tagalog, maabilidad, maparaan. That's the Filipino. There is something special about you. One more time, hold someone's hand, grasp it hard and tell that person there is someone, there's something special about you. <laughs> Unless you learn how to celebrate your gifts, you will not be able to fulfill God's mission for your life. When I think about the Filipino, I think of one thing. I think of how it is so important to be true to who we are. Tell somebody beside you, be true to who you really are. I'd like to read a scripture passage for you about Gideon. Say Gideon. When I think about the Filipino, I think of Gideon because Gideon also looked down on himself. Gideon also had inferiority complex. This was a time when Israel had an enemy the Midianites. Say Midianites. And the Midianites were conquering and defeating Israel. And then one day, one day, Gideon was hiding from the Midianites and an angel appeared to him and told him some fantastic stuff. In Judges chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, it says, Then the Lord's angel came to the village of Ophrah, that's where the TV show was being broadcasted. And sat under the oak tree that belonged to Joash, a man of the clan of Abiezer. Let's read together. His son, Gideon, was threshing some wheat secretly in a wine press so that the Midianites would not see him. The Lord's angel appeared to him and there and said, let's read together. The Lord is with you, brave and mighty man. You know, when you think about it, the dots don't connect. It really does not. How is it possible that a man who's hiding from the enemy, the angel comes and says, you're a brave man. Ask me why. Louder. Because God has x-ray vision. When God looks at you, he looks through you. He does not look at what's outside. On the outside, Gideon was a coward. On the inside, God saw courage. When God looks at you, he does not look. There, there's another scripture passage from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. It says, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You know what? Maybe on the outside, you've failed in your life. Maybe you've failed in your family. You've failed in your job. You've failed in school. 
But when God looks at you, He does not look at the failures on the outside. He looks inside you and He says, you're my champion. He's put within you success. Tell somebody beside you, you are a success. Deep within you, God sees it. Maybe on the outside, you're a sinner. On the inside, you're a saint. On the outside, you've fallen. On the inside, you're forgiven. This is your God. Not only does he have x-ray vision, God has future vision. Everybody say, I'm listening. God does not only see who you are today. God sees who you will become tomorrow. This is the God that you worship. When God looks at you, may, maybe you've made so many mistakes and maybe right now in your life there's so much mess, but your God looks beyond that and God says, no, you're going to have a great future. This is the God that you worship. This is the God that you follow. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. In jo Judges chapter 6 verse 15, Gideon answers the angel and Gideon replied, but Lord, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh. I am the least important member of the family. Gideon is saying, can't be me. You can't choose me. I can't do anything for you. I come from the smallest this and the smallest that. I'm a small person, not me. But you see, God does not look at how small you are. I'm going to read you one more passage. And it's from the New Testament. It's one of my favorite passages. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's read together. I love this. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. I want to share with you one truth. God likes working with underdogs. Yes or no? And if right now you feel like an underdog, and I know Filipinos, we, we think of ourselves as underdogs, that, that we've been conquered by the Spanish for, you know, the Spaniards for 333 years, and the Americans came and conquered us, and the Japanese came, you know, we feel like underdogs. I've got good news for you. God likes working with underdogs, and He's going to raise, raise us up, and He's going to make us very special, and we're going to have a special gift to give to the world. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. There is something special about our history. You know, we, I, I, I believe this with all my heart. The reason why we are the only Christian nation in Asia. There is something special in our history. There is, there is the hand of God in history. That's why we have this special role. We're underdogs. But you just wait. One day, we, we, we're, God's going to raise us up. And then we were gonna, we're going to bless the world it's happening already now. It's happening already now. Tell somebody beside you, there's something special about you. God does not see you only today. He sees beyond you. He sees who you will be tomorrow. I remember when I was still single. I remember... I could not understand how the brain of a new daddy works. When, when somebody becomes a new daddy, I think something strange happens to his brain. A friend of mine, his wife gave birth, and so I visited him in the family many, many years ago. I was still single. And I saw him peeking through the nursery glass, looking at his own baby. And then when he saw me come, he says, Brother Bo, come here, come here, look at my baby. She's so beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous. Brother Bo, look, look. She's going to be Miss Universe. She's a beauty queen. So I looked. <laughs> and then I looked at the baby at the right. And then I looked at the baby at the left. I didn't see any difference. <laughs> there was none. 
What was he talking about? All I saw was a fat baby and a fat face and a fat nose and a fat cheek and a fat fingers. I mean, that's all I saw. And then my brother-in-law and my sister, Bob and Tina, they, you know, Tina gave birth and so I visited and, and Bob, my brother-in-law, was holding his baby in his arms and he was so proud. And then he said, Bobo, look, look, look at the legs. They're so long. My son's gonna play in the NBA. And I looked at the legs and they looked pretty really normal baby legs to me. I said, oh, well, what, does, what do you see? Nothing, I, I don't see anything special. And then, I finally understood when I became a dad. For the first time, I, I, you know, I, when my firstborn was there and I was holding him, I think he was only about two months old. I was already bragging to everybody. I was showing him off to my friends. I was saying, look how intelligent my baby is. <laughs> look how intelligent. You know, and, 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 and my friend said, why, why? Oh, look, look, look. I held the little wrist of my son and then I said, close open, close open, close open. Of course, the baby's just two months old. Nothing is happening, right? So what do I do? Close open. About the 87th time, I saw the little pinky, the little finger move, quiver, jerk. And then I said, oh, oh, see, see, see. And, and you know, my mom, and I, I really announced this. Look at that. He is a genius. He will solve the problems of humanity. He will cure cancer. He will fix global warming. I mean, look at my son. And I, I realized something after that. I realized that our God is a dad. And when God looks at you, he does not only see who you are today, he sees who you will be tomorrow. He sees beyond the present. And the only difference is this. Ask me, what's the difference? All the daddies I talked about, my friend and my brother-in-law and me, we can make mistakes. But you know when God says, you're brilliant, you're awesome, you're a genius, you're beautiful, you're a champion, He cannot make a mistake because He's God. And right now, you may feel that there's nothing wonderful about your life because you're in a mess. Maybe right now you're facing a lot of challenges and storms in your life. Maybe right now you feel like a failure. Maybe because, because you failed in a relationship. Maybe right now you feel that there's, there's no potential in you because you know, you're stuck in a dead-end job. I'm speaking a word to you. Don't be stuck where you are in the present. Because God has x-ray vision and God has future vision. God sees something beautiful in you. And God sees something beautiful in your future. For 20 years, I was struggling with shame. For 20 years, I would wake up in the morning feeling so ashamed about myself because I was facing my demons. I was struggling with my addictions. I've sinned and sinned and sinned and sinned and sinned for years and I remember what God would tell me and these words healed me. Not overnight, but it healed me. At those moments when shame was gripping my heart, I would hear God tell me, my son, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And I would say, no, Lord, you cannot be proud of me. I'm, I'm a terrible person. And God would say, no, you're wrong. I'm so proud of you. You're, you're such a wonderful, wonderful person. I boast about you to my angels. When I see you, when I hear your name mentioned, I celebrate, I throw a party, I rejoice. I'm very proud of you. I'm your father and I'm proud of you, my son. I want you to lift up your hands to your father who is so proud of you. And say this after me, Father, 
Thank you for loving me, for not seeing only my mess, but seeing the glory, the beauty that is in me. Jesus, thank you for loving me despite all that I've done. Thank you for being proud of me. And I want to tell you that I love you. I belong to you. And I give my life to you. Amen.
What a great time that we have together, just being able to share the word. Though we are separated by thousands or hundreds of miles, you know, we are one. Our spirits are united, our hearts are together in the presence of God. And I want to share with you more God's word. I want to give you more blessings so that you nourish and grow in your spiritual life. And um, yeah, I, I want to send you more material. I want to give you my book. And you know, if you become a partner of this ministry, all you have to do is contact us with all the contact details being shown on the screen. Raise your hand and tell me, brother boy, I want, I want to be part of your ministry. I'm going to send you this material to your home, ship them there, and just to say thank you so much. And together, we will be able to bring more people closer to Jesus. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life. We all need partners. I need a partner. My wife, Maru, is my partner. Guess what? Everything else needs a partner. A thread cannot be sewn without a needle. Hot coffee will not brighten your morning without bread. Even a Lola will not be happy without a Lola. We all need partners to fulfill the mission that God has given to us. This ministry, we've been changing lives for 35 years and I've always had partners. And this broadcast ministry is no different. I need you. I need partners. I want teenagers to get to know God, you know, at that stage in their life. I want Filipinos abroad to feel God's love, even if they're thousands of miles away from their families. I want that Lola who wakes up at 5 in the morning to get inspired by our radio program. I want God's love to, to be experienced by those who are hurrying off to work with short video clips through the internet. If this has blessed you, imagine what it will do to millions of families and households everywhere. Come join me. Be a Kerygma TV partner. Sign up as our Kerygma TV partner today and receive all these inspirational materials for free. Daily readings and reflections sent straight to your inbox. Kerygma TV episodes or audio talks. Feast teaching booklets. And Bo Sanchez's latest book. Give today and we'll send you a special DVD copy of Unchurched, the Kerygma TV 2015 Holy Week Special. Wait, there's more! Subscribe to Monthly Giving and you'll receive a free ticket to Bo Sanchez's Kerygma Conference, the biggest inspirational learning event of the year. So hurry, be a Kerygma TV partner now. Log on to kerygma.tv give today.